हेलो एवरी वन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद अनदर लेक्चर ऑफ मैनेजमेंट अकाउंटिंग इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डील विद द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्रोसेस कॉस्टिंग राइट प्रोसेस कॉस्टिंग देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ कॉस्टिंग मैथड्स विच यू जनरली यूज इन द बिजनेस द फर्स्ट टाइप इज फॉर जॉब कॉस्टिंग एंड द अदर वन इज फॉर प्रोसेस कॉस्टिंग सो वेयर वी विल यूज प्रोसेस कॉस्टिंग वेयर वी विल यूज जॉब कॉस्टिंग सी If the company is manufacturing something which is a customized product, let's suppose you are manufacturing a furniture, you have a furniture shop, and you are manufacturing furnitures. Uh, you have standard furnitures available in with uh, with the with your shop, and if customers comes in, customer may uh, ask for some amendments in design, or maybe color combination, or maybe size, or something different. So if that is the case, so that. goes under the concept of job costing where we follow where we uh, you know have a customized product but if the company is producing a homogeneous product if a company is producing homogeneous product in mass production in that case the con- the concept which we use to value the inventory is basically called process costing we use to value it through process costing now there are few terms which are important whenever we uh, start the evaluation of the product uh, whenever we do the process costing question so the first term which we which is important is the input of material now what is input of material see there is a process right and you are saying that okay fine let's suppose we are talking about a uh, rice manufacturing company the company which is you know uh, which is taking uh, the raw form of rice and then uh, producing the a uh, form of rice which can which we can cook the 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 good version of rice right so suppose 1000 kg of raw rice has been input in the process right so when you do the process you will refine that rice and uh, there will be some losses right losses in the sense that whenever you know that whenever you input 1000 kg uh, the company expect that around uh, there will be 10% normal loss so 10% normal loss or normal loss is actually what this actually represents the output which the company is expecting from the process and which is unavoidable right so company what they do is they usually accept that loss they okay find this has to happen we cannot we cannot reduce we cannot eliminate this loss right so that is the that is the concept of normal loss so it means that if we are expecting 10% normal loss that means what we are saying that 100 kilograms will we will the company will not get 100 kilograms so how much company will get company is expected to get 90% of input right and this is what this is what we call expected output right so in this case expected output is around 900 kilograms now in reality it's not always the case that you will get 900 kilograms for example the expected output is suppose the company was expecting that they will get around 900 kg if they are making an input of 1000 kg but what is the actual output which they got actual output which they got was let's suppose it's around 850 kg so this means what this means that the company was expecting more but they didn't get that amount so this 50 kilogram difference will be classified as abnormal loss right so abnormal loss is what if the company gets lesser output as compared with the expectations then that difference is called abnormal loss or there is another way to see the same concepts calculate the same thing the normal loss which we are expecting from the process the normal loss which we are expecting from the process is 100 kilograms now let's see what is the actual output let's suppose the actual in this case actual output is around 850 kg 850 kg means we made an input of 1000 kg we got 850 kg so the actual output it's not output it's loss so the actual loss will be around 150 kg 1000 minus 850 so that means what that means company got more losses as compared with the expectations so the difference will be classified as abnormal loss right similarly the vice versa case for example the expected output was still 900 kg but let's suppose the actual output which company got 
was around 910 kilograms so 10 kilograms difference will be classified as abnormal gain the company got more output as compared with the expectations or if you want to calculate with respect to normal loss then the normal loss if you are expecting was around 100 kilograms what is the actual loss the actual loss which we got was 1000 minus 910 so that is around 90 kilograms that means company got uh, 10 kilogram less output less losses as compared with what they were expecting so this will also be classified as this will be classified as abnormal gain so for the calculation of abnormal what abnormal loss and abnormal gain are representing uh, the, it represents the amount of uh, the unexpected thing happening in the with the with the process uh, if you got more output compared with the expectation it's abnormal gain if you got less output compared with the expectation it's abnormal loss right so it's all about the expectations the difference of what we were expecting and what we actually got all right so these are few terms which are really very important so we discuss abnormal loss actual loss expected loss expected output normal loss input and abnormal gain now actual loss we also discuss now what is the scrap proceedings scrap proceedings is basically something suppose you got 100 one suppose you got 150 kilogram loss right in the form of uh, in the form of uh, uh, husk or in the form of uh, wastage or in the form of broken rice or whatever it is so what the company will do company will obviously not keep it with it, with it company will try to sell it somewhere so whatever amount the company will get by selling that output by selling that loss is actually classified as a scrap proceedings so scrap proceedings is actually representing the realizable value of normal loss in the market all right so these are few terms which are very important now let's move to the next slide see this is another point this these are few points which are very important extremely important uh, before starting with this let me try to write something here see what we are supposed to do we are supposed to value the output right value the output in the sense whatever output has been passed from work in progress to finish words we need to value the output so there are three things in uh, here the first thing is called the actual output sorry the first thing is called normal loss right normal loss is not an output but normal loss is something which we are seeing as a physical thing but which is not the finished product which is not the finished word so what we do it's a kind of wastage so normal losses are always valued on the basis of scrap proceedings right and the actual output actual output is always valued on the basis of cost per unit of the product right and if there is any abnormal loss or if there is abnormal gain both are valued on the basis of cost per unit of the product right and how can we calculate cost per unit of the product cost per unit cal is calculated by using this figure right this this formula cost per unit can be calculated by using this cost per unit of the product so uh, this cost per unit is calculated by total manufacturing cost total manufacturing cost is the sum of direct material which you are inputting in the process direct labor which you are inputting in the process and absorb production over here usually we don't have direct expenses if if that is here then we include that as well uh, scrap proceedings from normal loss is the quantity of normal loss multiplied by scrap proceedings per unit right and the expected output is the difference between input minus normal loss So this is basically how we can calculate cost per unit of the product right um, and then we have to prepare this work in process t account now how you will prepare work in process t account we start with the opening work in progress right and then we add direct material direct labor and absorb production overheads whatever is given as an input quantity we usually add it we usually show it on the debit side and on the credit side we first show the normal loss output abnormal loss now 
in the first part of our analysis there will be no closing work in progress and there will be no opening work in progress we will discuss closing and opening work in progress later right in the in the i think third or fourth question we will we will do that right now it's a simplest case where the company is having no opening and closing work in progress in that case we usually use uh, this cost per unit formula right now what is the logic of this cost per unit formula see the idea is very simple for example the input cost is around 50000 dollars right and you made an input of let's suppose 5000 kilograms but you know that out of 5000 kilograms there will be 1000 kilogram of normal loss so before starting the process we know that we will not be able to get 5000 kg as an output rather we will get only 4000 kg because 1000 kg is going to waste right so there are two options the first option is to divide 50000 with 5000 kg in that case we will get 10 dollars per kg as cost per unit right? and the second option is divide 50000 with 4000 and you will get i think 12.5 dollars per unit just take this calculation so if you if you if you follow this calculation then what will happen we actually assign cost to 5000 units right but we know that we won't be able to get 5000 units of finished product we will get 4000 kg as a finished product and 1000 kg will get will go for wastage right in the form of cuttings or in the form of evaporation in the form of in the in any other form right so in that case it's a i it's a better idea to distribute your cost for the output which you will get from the process so that you, when you s- will sell 4000 finished units of the product to the customer you will be able to recover 5000 dollars from them so that's why we divide total manufacturing cost with the expected output right and why we are deducting scrap proceedings from normal loss here see scrap proceedings of normal loss means actually what uh we know one thing that n- right now if we are charging 12.5 per unit from the customer we know that we are excessively charging 2.5 dollar per kilogram from all the customers right because uh, we don't want to bear loss we want customers to bear the uh, the cost of losses right but for instance these 1000 units we can sell these 1000 units in the market and we can earn we can earn around 2000 dollars from it right so what we can do is instead of uh, charging whole 50000 from the customer because we know we are overcharging we can reduce this cost by 2000 and then divide it with 4000 units so as a result 48000 will be divided with 4000 and i guess this will be around 12 dollars per unit so by did by reducing the total cost because you will get the uh, proceedings from normal loss you are trying to uh, minimize the uh, extra cost which you are charging from the customer so that's basically the reason uh, that's basically the theory behind this cost per unit formula all right Now there is another question why we are discussing why we are classifying normal loss as a scrap proceedings and why we are classifying abnormal loss or abnormal gain uh, with respect to cost per unit why we are valuing it like this See what happen is uh, normal losses are known in advance right So what we do is we normally adjust our figures with respect to normal loss So if we are charging 12.5 per unit from the customer we know that we will only sell 4000 units and by selling 4000 units we can recover multiply by 12.5 50000 from the customer So normal losses are is not a problem but let's suppose we are ex- we were expecting that we the company will get 4000 kg from uh, the process but actually company got 3500 kilograms from the process how much company can recover from the customer because 3500 kilograms you will sell later to the customer and you will you can recover the amount from the customer so 35.5 multiplied by 12.5 this is the amount this is the cost which we can recover from the customer what about those extra 500 units 500 units were actually abnormal loss 
and since we have already assigned 12.5 dollar per unit cost to abnormal loss and we are unable to get that amount that quantity with us obviously we won't be able to sell it as a finished product so this is actually the loss which company will incur because this is something which the company was not expecting from the process right so abnormal loss and abnormal gain is something which is going to impact the uh, the company in the form of uh, gain or losses right normal loss is something which we usually adjust so that's why we always value normal loss on the basis of scrap proceedings and abnormal loss abnormal gain in the in the uh, by using cost per unit of the product so in this case if you come if you if let's go back to the cost per unit so if the output of finished goods is 3500 units that will be valued at 12.5 and if abnormal loss is 500 units that will be valued at the rate of 12.5 and if the normal loss is 1000 kilograms times to 2000 dollars that will be valued on the basis of scrap proceedings right so this is a uh, something which is actually the first initial part of uh, uh process costing where we are not having any opening and closing work in progress in the next uh, lecture we will discuss we will do one question of uh, uh two questions in fact of uh, this topic and then we will proceed for the closing work in progress part all right take care allah hafiz